Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordeaux. We are the founders of Journey Coaching. We're super passionate about all things coaching and want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training over a thousand life coaches. Dive deep into a more meaningful career, find freedom, and make an impact on the world around you. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to build a word of mouth practice. This is a question we get all the time. Noel, good morning. Good morning. You know, um, word of mouth can mean a lot of different things now that the uh, internet is in our lives. You're so right. And (laughs) for, for our time today, I think we should simplify it to, you know, what is word of mouth? It's really one person telling another person something yes and and can i just say uh i just want to front load word of mouth is in my opinion the most powerful the most potent type of um advertising i agree yeah and uh from my perspective i believe that it is the most powerful because word of mouth is built on trust and real relationships Mm -hmm. and real experiences and real experiences. And there's no amount of content or marketing that can ever replace authentic um, sharing from human to human. I think this is how uh, things like Netflix has exploded. It's like, hey, have you seen this? You got to go see this. Um, I get friends all the time saying, you need to listen to this podcast. Uh, and I only I only uh, take in content and uh, that some is qualified or recommends. And so everything that I take in is usually uh, through word of mouth. That's important awareness and that's important mirroring. And so, you know, looking at and reflecting on your own life, what would you say were the major touch points? Like what were the number one word of mouth experiences that you have had that have catapulted your career? Oh man, Um, that have, I I get emails or I'll get uh, uh, DMs where people say, Hey, I found out about you through a friend or someone recommended uh, your book. Uh, you know, there, there's this kind of like, um, um, because words are shareable uh, today more than, than ever before uh, because of, you know, technology. And so uh, those are the people that usually um, come in and then eventually end up, you know, buying products or services. And, and this is the same with anyone building uh, a a life coaching uh, practice. Yeah, a hundred percent. On my end, in my world, every single business partnership that I've ever had that has been successful has come from word of mouth, from one person introducing themselves or one person introducing me or our company or our services to others. So... Today, we're going to play a game to explore this topic. Let's do it. I love games. Yeah. Yes, I know you love games. <laughs> and you're also the most beautiful guinea pig in my life. I love so, it. <laughs> I, love, I love that you said beautiful after, uh, before guinea pig. It kind of, uh, yes, you are, you are my, my personal gorgeous guinea pig. Um, so today, we're going to do an interactive podcast. Listeners, grab a piece of paper and pencil to play along because we're going to go through a period of discovery and the notes that you take down will give you your own touchstones and bullet points for moving forward in this space. And word of mouth can support a coaching practice in so many different ways. So just kind of off the bat, we want to be thinking about recommendations for individual clients. Also, we can be thinking about contracts that you as an individual coach can seek with an organization or, you know, thinking about John's wheelhouse, readership, listenership, um, all of the different content that you want folks to engage. And we can't leave that out of the word of mouth experience. Mm. So orient yourself to this space. And I'm going to ask a series of questions. John, you're going to answer them and we're going to brainstorm for our listeners all of the different ways that they can generate word of mouth. But before we dive in, is there anything that I missed as far as what you can gain with word of mouth? No, I think you covered it all. So, Mr. John Kim, as a coach, what is it 
that you want people to be saying about you? Ooh, man, what, what, a, what a powerful question. What is it that I want people to be saying about me? What's the, what are the rumors that I want people to spread about me? Yeah. Um, it would be, you know what, it would be, um, hey, here's a therapist who shows himself. Uh, here, here's a therapist who's, um, you know, honest or one of us. He just feels like a normal, regular dude, as opposed to someone who's not approachable. That would be my, my. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you want people to be saying that you're honest and authentic, that you're real, that you're approachable. Yeah. Human, you know, human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so what, what John is highlighting for us is the way that brand spreads because that's your brand right? in right. a nutshell. So what John wants people to say about him is the brand promise. How, how does this go? Um, Noel, I I'm in a different position. So in my private practice, I would love people to be saying that I'm a great coach that I helped mm -hmm. them through mm -hmm. something, um, or that, you know, my business journey coaching has demonstrated these results. Um, I also might want folks to tell others to listen to our podcast. Right. Um, I'd like, especially in your world, folks to tell people to read your books, mm -hmm. um, and check out the blog or, you know, even down to this course changed my life. Cause that's what we do at journey. We certify coaches. Um, so next question. Oh, wait, real quick. I want to say um, one of the rumors I spread about you all the time is um, how positive you are. You're, you're one of the people. So when I think about you, what really stands out um, is, and it's not a fake positivity. I, I know that um, when there's conflict or, you know, there's a problem, there's something that, that you have or a challenge that you have to um, um, sort out or, you know, a fire you've got to put out. Um, I know there's thought and intention and, uh, uh, you know, um, you're, you're pulling usually from your heart and making it positive and kind. And so that's, that's, that's what I would say about you. Um, that's the, the, the words that I would spread about you. And then, and then what happens is, uh, which is really powerful. And then when they're drawn to you, then the second part is the call to action. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I run this company. I, I coach on the side. I do this, I do that. And then, and then, you know, there's the buy-in. Absolutely. So folks, what John is saying, and first of all, thank you so much for those beautiful compliments, um, is that who we both are and what people say about who we are is the lead in mm -hmm. to any other aspect of connection. It's the primer, it's the foreplay, you know, it's, it's what's required for the call of action to be powerful. I think one of the greatest uh, mistakes that the, the new life coaches make who are building a practice is, hey, here's what I have for sale, would you wanna buy it? it it's mm. putting the cart before, the, before building the trust. And so, uh, you know, we're talking about um, character-based things and that's so powerful for people to start trusting you, to, to relate to you. And then it's like, okay, now I wanna um, buy something that you have or you offer. Absolutely. And sometimes it boomerangs. Um, I had a, I was, uh, somebody wished me happy birthday on Facebook. And I said, thank you. Mm. And there was somebody that I went to college with. And then this person out of the blue said, you know, I'm really sorry if I'm overstepping. I know we haven't seen each other in like, I don't know, 20 years, but I'm going through an expired relationship and I've been listening to John. <laughs> and mm. I was like, ah, Oh, my guy. So that was really just a really fantastic example of a one, two punch. And I was like, oh, this came out of left field. Somebody I haven't spoken to in 20 years from college is, you know, a diehard fan of my business partner. And it just made me feel so much love for the situation. And I was like, of course, I'll help you. Mm. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, it was great. It was really cool. So question number two, how will people who are in your life that think you're great how will they know that you would like them to pass your information to others oh man i so let me see how how will people who recommend you know that you would like them to pass i would say um 
and this is kind of a woo-woo answer, but I, I think they can feel my intention and energy. Uh, I mean, you know, the obvious would be when you just say, you know, can you pass this along? Or if this resonates with you, uh, maybe it will help someone else. But I think that, uh, you know, someone like me who is making content and videos every day, uh, my hope is that they feel my energy, which is kind of um, um, mostly turned on, you know, how can I be of service first? I agree with you. And I don't think it's woo woo at all. Um, so and, and this is part of your your personal development as a coach. This is part of your growth points as a coach. And this is something that I see in folks often when they're starting to flex their coaching muscles and grow mm -hmm. into themselves. Everybody's afraid to show themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so the way that people know that you're ready to be seen is in the energy and the confidence that you put out. And to me, that has everything to do with falling in love with your work mm. and really believing in your work and believing that the work of coaching is worthwhile, is worth sharing, is worth spreading, and that the people who represent your niche population are deserving of, of service, of new right. life, of new chances, second, third, fourth chances to turn it all around. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And then on a really practical level, you know, you have to tell people, right? So um, you've watched the iteration of Noel over the last decade. And there was a, a really long period of time. And I think I said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. More than I said anything else mm -hmm. until one day that scale tipped. And I guess what? I'm ready. Right. Right. And so now I am directly telling people, you know, speak about my business, speak about my work. I'd be happy to be on your podcast. I'd be happy to shout from the rafters how cool it is what we do. So signaling to folks also looks like a visible referral program. Uh, share with your network, share with your, um, your readership, your listenership. LinkedIn is a great tool. Instagram is a great tool. Facebook, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and get into open dialogue with folks about who you're looking to connect with, who is the right fit for your voice, who needs to hear your message. Yeah. And, and you know, there's that balance where, you know, uh, uh, Gary Vee talks about this jab, jab, punch thing where you give, you give, and then, you know, you, you ask for something. Um, I think you have to decide what that balance is for you and if it feels right. Uh, because if it feels like you're just asking for things, um, people can smell that and they're probably not going to, you know, get. So um, I find that you should give more and ask when it feels genuine and, and good, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Giving is the ticket to success. And yeah. we say that a lot. I can't enforce that enough that generosity is never wasted and the boomerang effect is real you know mm -hmm. when you take the time to give of yourself of your service of your voice you never know what light that will provide for somebody who's in a really dark place yeah and all of those moments of lighting a match in the darkness add up over time and i'm not being cavalier here this is actually how we change the world Right, right. Speaking of asking, that's uh, question number three. Yeah. So let's get a running list because I think this is where folks get stuck. They go immediately from if somebody knows about me, they're going to purchase my product. Mm -hmm. There's a, a long road between here and there. So yeah. let's get a tally of realistic, reasonable things that when people hear about you, what's the next step that you'd like them to take? For me, um, it's what happens organically is uh, it takes them a while to absorb, you know, my messages, my content, whatever, and then uh, build some trust. And then the way they reach out is usually via email or DM, and it's telling me um, about their story, their situation, um, wanting some kind of uh, advice. That's usually the progression, and that happens. Um, probably before they buy any services or products. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And and I would add to that list and and we operate differently but similarly so you know both of us have podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um 
I would like people to listen to the podcast. I would like people to sure, shoot me an email, tell me your story. I really try to respond to everyone that writes to me. Um, I'd like folks to read your books. I'd like folks to read the journey blog. I'd like folks to get involved with our community, try out a coaching session. I'd like folks to speak to one of our enrollment coaches to figure out if coaching is right for them. And then, you know, as an individual coach practitioner, it's all about the conversations. You know, if somebody needs help, I want to get on the phone with them and mm -hmm. really get into it and see if we're a good fit and see if I can help them. Um, I misunderstood this question. The, what happens is they tend to email me and this question is what action do you want your folks to take right and so I actually don't want anyone to email me because every time I open my inbox I have nothing but anxiety uh, because there's just you know uh, uh, hundreds of emails I gotta, I gotta shuffle through um, and it's me being you know uh, lazy or whatever but what I would want is exactly what you're talking about I would want them to um, listen to my podcast um, read my books, you know, subscribe to my texts, uh, take in my content. That that's my wish um, is for them to, uh, you know, if, if I was a channel, because that's kind of how I see myself now, of a channel and, and in all the different social media platforms, um, the content being um, pushed onto that channel, uh, including podcasts or blogs or whatever, just for them to um, tune into me. That that's my wish. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a great wish. So as you're, you know, sitting at home listening and thinking about this and making your own list of the actions that you want folks to take, what are all of the different ways that you allow people to tune into mm. you yeah. in the world? And if there aren't any, that might be a great place to start is to really think about what would it like look like for someone to tune into me? Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have to be from a content perspective. I'm thinking about one of our uh, team members, Samantha, who's a coach, and she's um, running a, a long put off yoga retreat. And she's so excited to have that interpersonal space for folks to really connect with her and tune into her for a long weekend. So that experience is, is the way that people are going to tune into her energy and hopefully work with her as a coach. Yeah. And this question is what really gets my tail wagging. Um, and this is the whole playing in, in, on, you know, in the sandbox, playing with everything. And there's so much out there and it keeps growing and there's new things you know there's audio there's video there's um just tons of apps but i i i think and we could you know it would be an hour to go through all that but i i think um the the way that i would look at this is uh the action you take for people to tune into you uh isn't necessarily like okay get on instagram get on clubhouse get on yes those are technical things but for me it's like the way you live your life because that that's ongoing and it doesn't matter if you're you know on on camera or you're just talking to one person at a coffee shop the way you choose to live your life has to as best you can match the message you're saying so um, having that consistency is how you get to tune into you um, when you are inconsistent and what you say doesn't match how you live then trust is broken because I, I'm saying this because there's a lot of quote unquote influencers who present themselves a, a certain way on social media, but in real life, they're not practicing what they preach. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard about that a lot in, uh, in the tiny house space where it's like, oh, there's your tiny house, but it's actually in your parents' backyard and you just walk into the house. <laughs> right. You know, shower, well, also, also like you, that. you know, people who are coaching, but without the certification. Right. That's sure. there. There's a, a, a there's something about that that doesn't ring uh, true, and um, you're gonna lose lose trust. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Last question, and we're gonna take a U-turn. So, when we're talking about building a word of mouth practice, I think our default is to think about human to human, uh, individual consumers. But how can word of mouth show up? with businesses. Mm. Yeah, and this is more your category than mine. Um, cards and coffee shops, obviously. Uh, and, and that sounds very old school, but uh, 
um, things like that, like, uh, um, you know, uh, like you mentioned a lot, local spas, um, guest speaking in different communities. Uh, for me, uh, um, fitness communities, word spreads very fast and, and a lot in fitness communities. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, sticking with cards and coffee shops for a second, um, that is something that's coming back, coming out of the pandemic. There yeah. is a huge interest from everyone in supporting local businesses, because as we were all stuck in our houses, we saw firsthand what was happening in our communities, on our streets with our neighbors. And, you know, if we're able to go out to a coffee house now and we see a card that someone who's in our neighborhood has a service that would benefit us, people are more likely to call. There is a mm -hmm. return to local support happening right now, and it's there to be capitalized on. Um, you know, what I'm thinking about too is businesses like um, writing platforms mm -hmm. or, you know, thinking about all of the different places where you might be asked to speak or to lend your services or to support a team or to support another business. Um, one thing that I've been really interested in and I haven't quite gotten my finger on the pulse of is wellness real estate. And a, a very simple example of wellness real estate is retirement communities. Mm -hmm. Retirement communities have people who run programming for that community, whether that's bringing in a golf pro or bringing in a coach to talk about end of life planning. So thinking about all of the different residential places where humans are going to need support is one way to think about generating that word of mouth relationship. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if it's online or, or offline, when you tap into a community, um, you're, you're, you're instantly scaling, you're tapping into, you know, um, a bunch of people instead of one. And that's a very smart way to um, get the word of mouth going and, and start building wherever you're building. Yes. Think captive audiences. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, this was a really fun conversation and I hope what we've shared today and show today will help you generate your own word of mouth practice. And as always, remember that um, the primer is you yeah. and how you show up in the world. Keep doing that and uh, the word of mouth will happen organically and people will start talking about you. Thank you for listening. Be well. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to journey.co slash everything to explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a strong community to do it in. We created Journey Coaching to equip you with the tools, training, and community you need to attain your goals. Join Journey Coaching and begin your journey towards personal freedom and a transformative state of growth today. That's J-R-N-I dot C-O slash everything.